Um, she's a retired investment banker um, that facilitated financing for businesses that needed $1 million to over $200 million, okay? And in our last investment endeavor that we um, experienced together that we, we are still invested in as well, she turned $1,200 into over $40,000, grew a portfolio of over 300 investors, and developed that portfolio to be valued at over $3.4 million, okay? And in just a short period of time, right, like, a week, she grew her own investment in the, the investment that you're going to hear about tonight, over 50%. And she did that while on vacation in Hawaii, right? How awesome is that? So please help me welcome to the line someone I have a tremendous amount of respect for, a lot of love for, um, Ms. Tanya Lawrence. Hello, Miss Carly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, guys, give it up for Miss Carly Gwen. She is absolutely the hostess with the mostest. Wherever you go, she's going to be there. You can depend on her being there. You can count on her being there and she's going to greet you with a smile. And she's so dependable that when I decided with my non-swimming self to slide down that four-story slide on that yacht, I knew who to call to be at the bottom and wait for me. So thank you, Carly Gwen, for always being there, supporting the big team and for everything you do. Appreciate you. Guys, I am just elated to be here. As Ms. Carly Gwen said, I, my background is as an investment banker where we facilitated financing for businesses around the world, really, mostly in the U.S. And what we're going to talk about right now is going to just blow your mind because it's what I did as a investment banker and it's tying in the technology that I fell in love with nearly eight years ago. And I have always been fascinated by the blockchain space, hence my nickname, the blockchain queen. And so my goal, my passion has been over this time frame to help people understand the potential of blockchain technology understand what makes it something that's going to make our lives easier. And we have some folks on the line with us who've been with me in this journey for a very long time. And I know they're just as enthused about what's happening right now. So guys, make sure you have pen and paper. Uh, be willing to write down everything I say. Write your questions down. Because if there's a question, there's an answer, right? I may not have all the answers, but we can get to someone who can get the answer for us in this space with this company, all right? And so I can't promise you that this opportunity will be for you, but what I will promise you is that you'll have a solid understanding of what we're looking at right now and why it makes sense to make it a part of your investment portfolio, okay? So I'm going to share my screen here. And I'm going to make it easy. You're not going to be a blockchain technology expert when we leave here. Take that off the table. Um, relieve that pressure. But you will have an ability to understand blockchain technology a lot more, how it works. You might even be scary enough to tell it and share it with someone, okay? So let's get right into it. We're going to talk about a company called Fintok. And it is brand new to the United States. We are really happy to be at the forefront of this technology and what's going to happen in the United States, okay? Have you ever been in, a, oh, and I also need some interaction from you guys. So I need you to like the chats up for me while we're talking. I don't wanna be here talking at you, right? Have you ever been in a situation where you said, man, I wish I was at the beginning of X. I wish I was at the beginning of Y because I know I have. There are so many things that I wish I was at the beginning of. Throw some in the chat. What are some of those things that after it happened and you saw what happened, you saw how it took off, that you said, man, I wish I was at the beginning of that. I wish I could have participated in that. You know, blockchain technology, we are really still just at the beginning. So I am your blockchain genie right now. This is your opportunity to be at the beginning of something 
and not understand fully how it works, right? Um, because you don't have to understand exactly how your cell phone works, but you're on it right now. You use it every day. Um, most of you use it to make money. And so that's the same thing I want to open your minds to. Understanding that something's out here, it's powerful. It is the next version of what the internet was for us back in the 90s. It's Web 3.0, and we're going to do something spectacular tonight, all right? So uh, let me see. Our little disclaimer here. I'm not a registered financial advisor, neither is anyone else on this call that you will be speaking to. If you have questions later, we are not owners of the company and we are just sharing information. This is for entertainment purposes only. So take this information, um, digest it for yourself and make your own decisions. If we're sharing this information with you, it's just based on our own decisions and what we've decided to do on our own, okay? So quick question before we get started. Let me go back a second. Has anyone here, put in the chats for me, um, has anyone here ever heard of like K-Day loans? There's tons of different companies out there. They'll give them to individuals. They'll give them to businesses. Say if you're a large government contractor and you need to be able to provide a service to the government and you need to cover payroll, you know, until the government give you, gives you your reimbursement in the next 60 days, there are companies, large companies out there that will lend money to you really quickly based on projected incomes, invoices, or if you're an individual, um, they see your pay stubs and they say, okay, great, we'll give you X amount of money until your uh, next pay period. There are tons of different companies in that space. Short-term lending space, sometimes they can end up lending to you for 18 months, depends on the cycles, right? There are tons of companies in that space. And we found with my investment banking firm in the mid-2000s, when the housing market crashed, the car market crashed, there were a, a surge. There was a surge of these type of businesses that allow people, allow businesses to lend to other businesses online. No more going to a bank, filling out an application. Boom, you put your information online. They turned it around within a matter of hours. You got your loan that same day. It was mind blowing how fast the space was moving. We help one of those companies based on the number of people that we refer to them go public. That's one of those ones that if you heard about a company like that, you should have been like, man, I wish I was there before they went public. Man, I wish I would have owned some of the stock before they went public. Guys, we're about to put you in that space and tie along with it blockchain technology, okay? So here we are. Um, when you're looking at a, a new company, you're looking at a new industry, it behooves you not to do your research on Google uh, just based on opinions or on YouTube based on people who want to get clicks based on saying good, good information or bad information. It doesn't matter. Either way, if they get a click or a comment, they make money. What I want you to do or what I want you to get in the habit of doing when you're in this new technology space is looking at trusted sources, stakeholders in the industry. Here's one of them. Um, Binance Feed. It's a new source where you can go and get unbiased information about companies and about technology. And Binance Feed did an article recently and put it on their website talking about the top five cryptocurrency projects with the highest audit trust scores. We are starting right out the gate, letting you know that this company is legit, not because Binance Feed said so, not because I said so, because CoinQ did an audit and went through the books for this company, audited, did their first audit for the company, gave suggestions. I don't know if anyone's ever um, ran a nonprofit, sat on a board for a nonprofit. You know, the audits come annually and they'll, they may say, here's some things you need to fix. You go and fix them and then boom, you're good to go, right? You may get a three-year clearance. This is what is going on 
right now in the crypto space with all of these different companies coming about, you want to know what their trust, uh, their audit trust score is. Okay. So you want to write that down. That's one of the things that you need to look at when you're looking at a company. Can I have you mute your line, please? All right. So that's one thing. Write that down. The audit trust score for the company. And here is what they've also said in the, uh, the article, that there's an automatic stop loss when clearing conditions are met to ensure that users' funds are free from any risk of loss. That's not me saying it. I am not telling you that if you are joining in this lending space that your funds are free from the risk of loss. It's FinTalk talking about their platform and what they've done, what they put in place to make sure that your funds are free from risk of loss, okay? And I'm going to dive into that a little bit more. So put a circle around that, risk from loss, and make sure that we get to that and address it, right? All right. Here's some more information, Market Watch, And write these sites down because you'll be able to go back um, and, and do your own verification. And most importantly, make sure you're engaged with these sites. These websites give very valuable information about what's going on in the world today. Some of it may seem like mumble jumble way over your head, but it's like a song. You're listening to it on a radio. At first you get the hook and first you're like, I don't know if I like it. Then you're sitting in your car to and from work, picking up kids, going to the grocery store, in the grocery store, at the mall, you're hearing the song subliminally over and over and over again. Next thing you know, you get to a cookout, you're having a great time, you have one or two libations, and all of a sudden that song comes on and guess what? It's your jam because you've heard it so many times. You didn't even realize that you've learned the words. That's the same thing that will happen with this information. You just got to have it around you. You just got to inculcate yourself in the information and make it your jam. And eventually you won't just know the hooks. You won't just know blockchain technology. You'll have a great understanding of what's happening with the space, right? And so on this, in this article on MarketWatch, um, it says FinTalk, the name of the company, wins the top three Web3 Technology Innovation Award at the World Web3 Summit. This is a summit of all the tech companies in the world, and they won the top 10 Web Technology Innovation Award. All the companies in the world that are in this space, top 10. This is massive. You know, sometimes it's hard. You guys work for employers and different magazines may run contests in your area. It's hard for your employer to win top 10 employer. It's hard for your, that's in your, your state, right? What about what happens in your city? It's hard for them to even win there. This company won top 10 in the world for innovation based on the technology that it put together. And this is something that is, major to understand. Innovation is happening. You need to be with the people who are innovating, the people who are doing it responsibly, the people who understand what is happening in this space, okay? All right. So peer-to-peer -peer financing. Anyone know what it is? Put a Y in the chat if you know what peer-to-peer -peer financing is, because you're going to be the person that is going to hold tight for a second, well, I hope everyone get up to speed. All right. Is that okay? Because we're here to make sure that everyone learns and we're going to kind of take our time a little bit with this. I'll just read on here what this says. FinTech is a, let me move my screen a little bit. All right. FinTech is a P2P blockchain financial platform that focuses on innovating blockchain financial markets. To me, that sounds like Mandarin Chinese, right? Um, what I might understand. FinTech provides diversified financial services with its main business being borrowing, investment, and financing. That we all understand, okay? So those are their main um, services that they provide. Borrowing, 
investment, and financing. And their exclusive blockchain security technology, their hybrid, allows users to truly enjoy zero risk blockchain investment. Again, we're going to talk about that risk because you got it circled on your paper. But let's talk about this peer-to-peer blockchain finance. All right. So we're going to uh, make some pictures and you can draw them out if you want to, right? All right. Smart contracts is what they are using here on a blockchain. And this is going to change everything in the world. And I, I want you to understand that this has global impact. You're looking at something again at the beginning stages of it, um, peer to peer things that can be done on the blockchain will include the ability for you to have solar panels on your roof, have a smart contract already set up on the blockchain and sell solar panels, excuse me, sell energy to your neighbors while you're at work and you, that energy is just being collected from the sun. You're not using it, but you might have some neighbors that work from home and they need power. They want to buy your power cheaper. Boom, they'll be able to do it on the blockchain. Think about Changes like Carvana, you know, not having to go to a car dealership anymore to pick the car that you want, negotiate it, sit there all day to see if the manager in the back is going to change the price. Now they have vending machines like Carvana. Well, what happens when you can now take your digital currency and purchase that car? You're doing it through a smart contract on the blockchain. Guys, I am telling you, these things are happening. It's changing rapidly. You will see. I'm sure some of you have seen in restaurants or hotels that there are robots that will deliver your towels at the hotel. There's robots that will deliver your food to your table. Or even when you go to a restaurant, um, maybe you walk up to the desk and you punch your order in on a keypad. All of that is currently on technology and will be moving towards blockchain technology because here's what will happen. With artificial intelligence and blockchain technology, some smart teenager will be able to design a bunch of robots from home, uh, give them out to different businesses on smart contracts and have those robots operate during certain hours and charge the restaurant owners a fraction of the cost that it costs them to hire restaurant employees and pay for liability insurance and, and pay for, um, what's it called? The unemployment insurance. Yeah, that's, it's been a while, right? Uh, all of those different insurances and costs that they had will be reduced because of technology. Start to think about the things in the way that you're used to your life working. These things are changing. Your children, you need to be talking to your children about blockchain technology because it will change their future and how they make money. As a matter of fact, there will be some very gifted children playing video games, earning tokens, which they've been doing for years. Those tokens will, on some platforms, be able to be converted to income. There are very wealthy teenagers right now because of what they've learned with artificial intelligence, NFTs, blockchain technology, all these things that these kids are adapt to learning. Those will be the mortgage lenders of the future because they'll be able to have their tokens, their currency on their computer that they made. You'll be out looking for a home, $600,000, million home, and boom, via a smart contract based on your online profile credit score, they'll be able to make a decision in seconds via the blockchain if they want to give you the money or not. Now, if teenagers will be able to do this, you need to be able to do this. If you're still in a position that you're earning money the way that your grandparents earn money, guys, I need you to think about that. So much has changed. I was just thinking about this in my lifetime. The microwave was invented. The, the cordless phone in the house. We didn't have one of those when I was born. The cell phone. So many things have changed. The ability of what you could do on the cell phone. The world is changing around us. You have to be in a position where you can grow with it. You can start making money from it and change your legacy, okay? So now we're talking about the ability to have financing happen peer to peer from one person to another on the blockchain, all right? Everyone with me? All right, so here's the app. 
Love this. Love this. Love this app. This app has been looked at several times a day uh, over the last 10 days. We've been super excited. Guys, let me let me stop for a second because I got some other people that, that really need to think about this technology and what's happening. If you're a CPA, if you're a banker, if you're anyone that you're in between two different agencies, technology will soon be able to replace that. So you need to be looking at what's your next step. How do you put yourself in a position to still be able to be financially viable in a world that's ever changing and positions may be canceled, okay? And so just needed to add that in there, all right? And so here, here is the app, the FinTalk app. The person that referred you is going to give you this FinTalk app and a code. Do not use this one on the screen, okay? Um, and so you'll be able to download it on uh, based on that the link that they give you, and it'll be very quick. They will sit and walk with you so that you're in a position to be a lender, okay? What does that look like? Um, being a lender on the blockchain. Let's talk about the blockchain for just a second. And I really want you to get creative and draw some pictures, right? The blockchain is a, a form of technology, this Web 3.0 you've been hearing about. And it means that um, at some point, some information or some data is put together and that goes into a block. That block is sealed. And once that block is sealed, it's then added. Say this block is here, add it to a chain. So this information is sealed. This can happen in nanoseconds and it's sealed. And the way that it's sealed, this block is sealed, is based on nodes. Nodes are computers around the world or, or technology that people may have access to around the world that are making decisions about the viability of what's supposed to happen in that block. The first thing to go on the blockchain was Bitcoin. A lot of people are familiar with Bitcoin. You've been uh, able to receive Bitcoin from someone, send it to someone, pull it out of an ATM, do different things, spend money, uh, spend or buy things via Bitcoin. What's happening is that a node somewhere, some computer around the world is saying, instead of there being a bank teller in a bank that's saying, okay, I have a check. I'm going to go into the check. I'm going to give it to the teller and they're going to let me know. Let me look on this ledger and make sure this person has enough money in their account to clear your check. We no longer need people for that. We have technology and they're called nodes. These smart computers around the world, uh, before you might have been able to own one on your own before now, they are very expensive to get your hands on. And if you have one, it is somewhere sitting there. And the way I, I love this description I got before is that the node is sitting there and it, it's calculating. Um, it's calculating and saying, okay, let me check to confirm. We need at least six confirmations from six different nodes. There may be one in Malaysia, one in Guam, one in Hawaii, one in Canada. We need six different ones, six separate independent ones to say, yes, this money is in here for this transaction to clear. And this is happening in nanoseconds, right? And so the node, in order for them to calculate and generate that information, is maybe doing a mathematical problem. And let's say they're all trying to get to a mathematical solution that is the number 10. How many math problems can you get to? Put some in the chat for me that the, the um, solution is 10. We know some easy ones, 10 plus zero, one plus nine, two times five. The list goes on and on and on the way that you can get to five. So that's what these independent computers are doing around the world. They're coming up with a solution. And by the time it's eight years, nine years into this technology space, they're doing quantum physics to come up with these solutions, right? To get to the number 10. But it's necessary for them to verify that, yes, there's enough money in there for that check to clear essentially for my Bitcoin to leave my wallet and go to someone else's wallet, 
All right. And so those nodes are around the world, making sure that there will never be a bounce check on the blockchain. Imagine what happens to financial institutions when they can no longer charge NSF fees, bounce check fees, all the fees that they charge to grow their profit margins, right? So that's no longer the case. We have computers that are going to do that. And so, boom, that block is formed and it's added to the chain because there's another block that comes right behind it and they merge together. Now, there is data and encryption and a lot of technology that goes into this being formed in nanoseconds, boom, being connected to this one. And so it's virtually unhackable. When you hear about um, things that, that may have been scarier in the news saying something got, somebody got hacked, their, their crypto wallet got hacked, it wasn't the blockchain. It may have been that they took their secret key or their password, took a screenshot, and it got to the cloud. The cloud can be hacked. Your computer can be hacked. That information can be hacked. The blockchain cannot. All right. So we're talking about serious technology that puts us in a, in a position to advance as a society, move much faster and do things that we were never able to do before. Being able to move money from country to country in nanoseconds. Uh, Dr. Garner, I, I think I hit her up yesterday. I was like, hey, I need some Ethereum. I had sent her over some money and she sent me back some. I think I think I sent her crypto. She sent me back crypto seconds just like that. Right. Don't do that. I'm not offering her services up. We are longtime friends, right? Um, and so that's how easy that happens, right? And so now you're in a position, these, these two blocks are put together, this chain is formed. That is essentially what the blockchain is. Super easy. That's the way I want you to think about it. It's information put together in a block and it's moved along and stored together. And so if someone wanted to get to your information back here that you put together in this block, there may be a thousand other pieces of information in this block. They got to get through within seconds, get through this block that already formed. And while the time they're trying to hack that, this form has this block has formed over here. The chain gets very long, very complicated, very fast, and the best hackers in the world haven't been able to do it. So this technology is meant to make things safer for you and allow you to do things that you never could do before. Here's one of them. You're now able to be a lender and lend money through a smart contract. Here's how it works. You, and you can follow my cursor here. We're over here on the left-hand side. You are the lender in FinTalk. You, whatever amount you want to lend, can earn 1% a day interest on that amount. That money goes and it's available here via a multi-signature loan contract, a smart contract wallet, where the, the funds are really hypothecated here, okay? So it's there sitting there. When your bank has your money, let's say your bank has your money over here in the bank, you put $100 in there. Let's make the numbers easy. You put $100 in the bank. The bank can turn around and lend out $1,000 based on your $100 deposit. They can earn interest on it. They can earn fees on it, but guess what they'll never do? They'll never share the money with you. You now get to put yourself in a position where you're the bank. You get to be over here and be the investor. The, the funds are here. And then you have a borrower. This is the borrower over here. Remember I talked to you about those uh, government contractors who may need money right away to, to service a government contract or you have someone who is saying, hey, you know, I my furnace broke. I need some money right away. And so I get paid on Friday. It's Tuesday and it's 30 degrees in Minnesota or 30 below in Minnesota. I need my furnace today, right now. I need a, a quick loan. They'll get it from someone, pay it back on Friday, right? So the same thing is happening in this space. And it's no different than what's already happening. The only difference is, is that you get to participate, all right? So the borrower comes and the borrower wants to borrow money. They can borrow money for up to seven days at a time. 
The interest rate on that money is 2% a day. I know you were wondering like, um, Tanya, you always told me if someone guarantees me anything, you know, run. Well, here's how that's happening. If the borrower is borrowing 2%, excuse me, paying 2% a day, the lender, I mean, excuse me, Fintech is splitting that and giving us half or 1%, okay? So that's how that's working. Or if the borrower says, I just need the money for one day, they pay 2.5%. What are people doing that they're willing to borrow and spend 2% a day interest for seven days? Well, these people are trading, these are large institutions. These are very well-heeled traders. These are people who are experienced that can earn anywhere from 15 to 30% a day. And, and, and I've heard crazy numbers from the traders that I've learned under how much they were able to earn in a day. These are very experienced people that do this and they just want an infusion of capital. And so if they can take someone else's money and only pay 2% for the day, but earn 18%, who would do that all day? Who would do that? If you had a business and you knew that you can get money from someone at 2% a day, turn around and, and earn you know, 20%, 30%, 40%, that's just good, smart business. Guys, we get to participate in that ecosystem, okay? Some of the security is put in place. When the borrower goes to borrow the money, they put 50% of that down as a deposit. So let's say, it, here's an example over here. Um, the, the borrower borrows $10,000. They put $5,000 down as a deposit. That $10,000, they're able to use and trade it on these three platforms right here. And the smart contract is cut. There's a um, stop loss in place that if, they lose, if they, the, the computer will see, the smart contract will see, the blockchain will see that if they get to a point where they've lost 30% of their money, number one, the loan is yanked back. It, that 30% or 3,000 in this case is going to come out of the 5,000 that they put in a deposit. So there's no money lost, all right? Um, they won't be able to borrow again. They're, they're excluded from the platform for being able to borrow again. And so that protects your interest as a lender, all right? And so here you go, the 6,500 $6, USDT plus 3,500 of the 5,000 go back to the wallet. That's And plus there's about 1,400 interest for the day. That is calculated from the 2% a day, I'm excuse me, 1,400 um, pay interest. That is 2% a day for the seven days. And guys, this puts the borrower in a position where they're out of the way and you as the lender are secured with your investment, okay? And so we're all doing this through Fintoc, the platform. So here's what it looks like. As the lender, you get to decide you want to lend money now. And I love the fact that Fintoc is really in a scenario where they have people who really want access to the platform on both sides to be borrowers because they are doing it um, in moments, able to borrow. And also you as a lender get to be a lender in moments. Usually if you wanted to go and participate with a large bank and you said, hey, I want to put some of my capital in here. And when you lend it and you make money off of it, I want some too. You have to be an accredited investor. You got to know someone that knows someone that knows someone. And already I can tell you the answer is no. Um, someone's writing on my screen. Can I have you stop, please? Okay, so um, here in this scenario, you get to be the lender. Now, let's say you are lending and you wanted to put 50,000 in. We've had people do that already in the last weeks. You wanted to put 50,000 in, but there wasn't enough uh, an interest at that second for anyone who needed that 50,000. There might only be a contract where someone needs $35,000 of that money. They will, when you hit grab it, they will tell you, you know, we're only going to accept $35,000 of that money right now. You can try again to send the rest of it in later. Guys, I love that. This is not a situation where they're just taking money for the sake of taking money. They're taking money for the sake of lending it to 
people. And so here's what this scenario looks like. The app looks like for the borrower. They're able to borrow the money. Um, here's their margin. They put 50% down. And then it says what investment platform they're able to trade on. And in this scenario, they're using PancakeSwap. So again, they're on here trading currencies that most of us have never heard of because we're familiar with the big ones, right? They're on here trading and this trading platform does more volume than most platforms that we hear about and talk about. We talk about coins and we talk about Coinbase. Cash App is not one of them. Um, these platforms that we think are popular and a lot of people are on, they don't pale in comparison. The daily trading volume on an average on pancake swap is anywhere from 100 million to 20 billion dollars a day imagine if just half of that 10 billion dollars a day was being borrowed on our platform guys there's a lot of bandwidth because i am certain that they're nowhere near the surface of what's possible when they start advertising and reaching out to the traders on pancake swap and saying that hey you can borrow money from us so that you can use someone else's money to make money all right and so fintech is truly a defi decentralized platform what's that mean? Um, DeFi decentralized the, the difference between that. When I talked about Coinbase, um, CoinZoom, those are centralized platforms. Those are platforms that when you put your crypto on there or you buy crypto on there, you have to verify your ID, put your name, information, address, and they report to some government entity. When the blockchain was created and Bitcoin was originally created, it was for the people by the people. It was not intended to be owned or uh, taxed by any government entity, entity, but certain platforms came into play and said, hey, we'll let you buy and sell Bitcoin here or currencies. We'll let you trade them here. And based on where they're registered, the government said, hey, if you're registered here, we want taxes. And so that's the kind of conversation that they're heatedly having, debates that they're heatedly having. Here are some of the decentralized platforms that are out there and available. This means that when you go and write this down, because this is very important, when you go and you open your wallet through MetaMask, BitKeep, I am token, or I'm token, I don't know how you pronounce it, token pocket, Exodus, Exodus is my favorite right now. When you open any of these platforms, they're not asking for identification. They're not asking for a KYC. So you simply are the bank. Think of it like a safe in your hotel room. If you don't know the combination to the safe, then you're pretty much out of luck, right? And nobody else can come in and take your money in and out. So that safe that you have your money in is yours. You make the combination to it. And in this case, that, that combination is going to be your password. Write this down. Very important. Not just for you. It's important for your estate. Whoever's going to be there that you want to will this these funds to after your untimely demise, they need to have access to this information. And so many people don't write it down and don't share it and don't put it in their will or somewhere um, that, that everyone knows or the, the people who need to know know where to, to find it, that that money is lost generationally, okay? So you're going to have your password that you create, and then you're going to have what's called a secret key. It's going to be a series of 12, 16, or 20 different words that you have to write down in a specific order. And then when your money is on the blockchain via a DeFi wallet, it doesn't matter if you start with a MetaMask wallet and you create a password and they give you the 12 keys, the 12 words, your secret key. If you lose that MetaMask wallet, you lose that phone, you can't find it, something happens, it gets dropped in the ocean, it doesn't matter. Your money's not lost. It's on the blockchain. You can go open another wallet, Exodus, another MetaMask wallet, a token pocket wallet, put in your password and that, that secret key that you had stored and written down, your money is still there on the blockchain. Guys, did you hear me? It's no longer about if a bank is still solvent. 
if a company is going to stick around, if FinTech is still available. The money is yours and it's on the blockchain. This just like, it makes the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. It is just so exciting that this type of technology can take place and we can participate in it. Here are some of the other types of coins that will be available to be swapped on or, or traded on PancakeSwap, Uniswap, and SunSwap. Um, some more information. When we talk about the legitimacy of this platform, um, there was a hackathon a launch event held October of last year. And Fintech held this launch event and announced its future projects. And it had some of the smartest and brightest brains in the world come to this event and talk about their technology, what they're doing, you know, poking around in their technology, trying to hack it. Guys, and this is, again, something that you want to read off of yahoo.com. We're not looking at people who don't have any experience. You're looking at legit viable sources in the article. The link for the article is right there. Um, so again, these are all credible sources of information where you can go and see what's happening with FinTech and how solid it is. Some of the upcoming projects. I mean, if, if you're already on the edge of your seat and you're like, this is amazing, guys, this is just the beginning. They haven't even scratched the surface. I'm telling you, they're brand new in the U.S. and they have so many different verticals that will be coming along with this technology, okay? Let's look at what this really means for you. If you have your funds and you're lending them out and you're earning on average 1% a day, any amount you can think of. Um, let's let's go big. Let's look at someone starting with fifty thousand dollars. All right, over here on this chart to the right, and it shows you if you're starting with fifty thousand in your account and just doing basic math, earning one percent a day. On your first day, you'll earn five hundred dollars. Guys, this could be a whole business model. I know people who open franchises like Subways, um, small 7-Elevens, lots of smaller franchises, you know, cookie ice cream franchises that they may take, you know, 10, 20, 30, $100,000 to open this franchise and not make a profit for three years because it's their business model. Who would love to put themselves in a business model where you're lending, your money's on the blockchain, the blockchain is secure based on the technology, no matter if the company's there or not, your money's still on the blockchain, they're just hypothecating your money the same way the bank is doing, the bank's not sharing any profits with you, but FinTech is, okay? This puts you in a position with your new business model to go do whatever you want to do to get the, the um, something legal, to get the 50,000, earn $500 a day. And 36, or excuse me, a month, that is $18,000. Two months, it doubles. Two months. Month six, you're looking at 400,000, in one year, 3.2 million. Who wants to put up $50,000, change their model of how they're buying their dream home, and instead of putting down 20,000, or excuse me, 20% um, and paying for, for homeowner's insurance and taking out a 30-year mortgage, wants to now look at how much money they can put away, let it compound and grow for a year, to purchase their dream home. Completely different way of looking at money. This is the way that we need to train our children and our grandchildren on how to look at money. This is complete paradigm shift. It's happening. It's happening here. It's happening now. And you just need to make a decision whether you want to be a part of the paradigm shift when this, this train is moving, right? Let's look at 100,000. That's $1,000 a day, $36,000 in a month. It's $100,000 in profits in two months. In six months, $800,000 in profits. 12 months, $6.4 million. Guys, my goodness. My goodness. 
And this is so amazing that this platform has decided to let someone start lending as little as a hundred dollars at a hundred dollars. You're even getting in, you know, kicking the tires just to see that the platform works. You can withdraw your money, do whatever you want to do. You're earning $1 a day, $36 in a month. Your money has doubled in two months, six months, $800, $6,400 in a year. I, I don't think I need to say any more about this compounding chart. It makes my heart race. And I hope I hope that the blockchain genie has given you a sleepless night. Like Dr. Groner said the other day, she ordered insomnia for everyone. Doctor's orders, right? It gets even better um, because there are people who are like myself, who love to empower people. It's what I did for a living with our investment banking firm. I made sure that my clients had access to information so they could get access to smart capital. And I went and talked from the mountaintops at every chamber of commerce, at every um, municipality, everywhere where I knew that there were businesses growing, looking for money, expanding, needing to provide services to municipalities. Hey, if this person needs to provide services to you and they need to be solvent to provide those services, let me help them get financing, right? And so I was very creative in my approach on how I found my clients and how I service my clients. Your clients right now may just be your family. You hear me on that? You got children, you got grandchildren. You want to set up a legacy? I don't know about you, but back in the day, my family used to get me uh, savings bonds for my birthday. Man, I, I used to get them every birthday. My 16th birthday, I went and cashed them all in because I wanted a car. My mom let me do it. God bless her heart. I was a mm, special child. Um, she let me do it. And when I went and cashed them in, they were pennies on a the dollar. They had not matured. Some of them I had for over 10 years, right? We're talking about these funds maturing, 10xing, just doing amazing things that we have not had access to in the past, okay? So put your children, your grandchildren, those may be the people that you're referring to the, uh, to the program if you're not someone who's like me, who's going to go out and tell everyone that they know to make sure that they put themselves in a position to empower others. So what happens here when you refer someone to the platform, they are making their own 1% a day, but the company will pay you 15% of their earnings, okay? Now, let's say you referred your husband and your husband decided, okay, we're going to put our three kids in here as well. Those, those three kids are on the second level. Now, those three children are now earning 1% a day, but you, because you referred them, you referred your husband, your husband referred those children, you're earning 10% a day on what the children earn. Guys, this just gets insane, right? Here's an example. Um, on $10,000, the 1% daily commission on $10,000 is $100. You earning 15% of that is $15 a day in free money. I like free money, right? Um, on this next level, the, the children, this was your husband up here, level A. Level B is your grandchildren. They, again, have $10,000. They're earning 1% on that $10,000. That's $100 a day times your 10% that you're going to earn on that on their earnings. That's $10 a day. That's $25 a day that you didn't work for. Anybody okay with that? Let me see some whys in the chat. If you are okay with having money flowing into your account that you didn't go out and work a job for, that you didn't go out and exchange your time for a dollar for. Guys, it just gets better and better and better as you help more people. Our Foresight family, Mr. and Mrs. Bean, are always about serving the masses. They have a goal for Project 10,000 where they're going to help over 10,000 people have a passive residual income of at least $5,000 a month, and they are well on their way to getting there, All right? And so there are people out here that just are serving leaders. They want to impact people. As a matter of fact, we have some, and I'm just going to quickly shout out our people who have reached their rank of GM 
in less than 10 days, guys. That means that they have an investment portfolio of over $50,000 with at least five people that they've referred to the platform. And with that, their daily income on top of their earnings, on top of what they get from their investors, they get an overall bonus or earning from the whole team everyone down um, throughout the organization, they're earning a minimum, excuse me, of $100 a day. $100 a day, that's three grand a month. We'd be paying mortgages in less than 10 days. Guys, it is worth it to talk to someone. So shout out to our new GMs. We have Dr. Marika Garner, Mr. Joe Cohen's and guys, four or five, when you put four or five in the chat, that stands for foresight um, for our organization. Give them some four or fives in the chat and let's clap these folks up for going out there and changing lives. We have Lashmi Delacour, Major Enterica Cephas, Miss Ellen Smith, and Earl LaSalle. And guys, we are here. We're represented in the United States, Canada, and the Bahamas in just 10 days with people reaching GM. That doesn't include the people around the world who are about to pop GM from other countries, guys. And then the next level, once you have two people that you've helped become GMs, you become a VP, your income is gonna range between the additional income between 150 to $300 a day. Who would be very happy to talk to some folks and help them get on a computer for the opportunity to earn an extra $300 a day. Guys, we have none other than our own Mrs. Bean, who has reached the VP level. Guys, give her some four or five, some love in the chat. And then Senior VP, we are just smidgens away from celebrating our own Mr. Bean. But guys, look at this. It says, the estimated daily incentives for a SVP is between 600 and 1500 a day. Well, the company doesn't put a cap on it. Our family has been very strategic about how we put things together. And the Foresight family is going to coach you and help you through this entire process. And so Mr. Bean, not even a senior vice president yet, is earning over $900 a day. If the company would have capped him, he would be stuck at $300 a day. So we're just grateful that they aren't capping our income and our income potential. And then it goes all the way up, as you see, to MD. And that's where you're earning anywhere from $13,000 to $30,000 a day. Guys, I, I need you to take your limits off right now. I don't know about you, but I love luxury. I love dream building like Mr. Bean talks about when we go out to, when we go hang out with him in Houston, he takes us out on a boat and we go look at all the multi-millionaires homes. Guys, these are their second homes. These aren't their primary homes. These are like vacation homes somewhere where they have where people can go and hang out or summer, right? This doesn't happen because they're going to exchange their time for a dollar. This happens because of smart financial moves and decisions and striking while the iron is hot and getting things done. Put yourself in the position that you're making a move to be one of the first people in the United States to make $30,000 a day in just bonus income because you've impacted lives. There are about 20 people in the company, in the Asian markets, no one in the U.S. yet who have reached this market. So, I mean, that 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 banner. So guys, when I tell you we are brand new out the gate, we are brand new out the gate, but don't ever sleep on what we're doing as an organization. As an organization in our portfolio, in the last 10 days, we have over $835,000 in volume. We have over 670 people in the portfolio. And guys, I'm not even... 10 days. This is about nine days when you look at when we started and when we start putting people in. So it's been absolutely phenomenal. There's just more money. Uh, you can take a screenshot of it. Guys, more money. When you help your people in your organization earn money, the company says, listen, 
You got seven days to catch up or you'll no longer receive that incentive that you got for having that person in your organization under you. So it only incentivizes you to go help more people. One of the other passive streams of income that's coming down the pipeline is the fact that the company will be going public. Um, and as a part of that, they have their own coin, the FTH coin. And so for every $100 that you earn in interest, it's worth $1 in USDT in the value of their coin. And so this coin will only be available for people on this platform. So please don't go somewhere. We've had this happen when we've invested in other things before. People go somewhere and they say, oh, I see the, the STO offering in the FinTech, the FTH coin. I'm going to go and buy it off of this platform. Don't do that. Don't put yourself in a position to be duped from a copycat, all right? Get with this person who invited you so that you can become a part of this overall success story. And so you see the portfolio for FinTech. It's made up of about 30% of the revenue comes from investors like us, 52% um, of the revenue from FinTech. And then about 18% from the royal family who um, is a part of this company, all right? Again, the, the goal is to become a public offering on NASDAQ. Remember I told you about some of those other lending platforms that we helped in the early 2000s? It's based on the amount of users that they get and the amount of traction that is there for the company and how much they are able to be vetted um, and audited. It's a big thing to go public. So if you have ever said, I wish I was there at the beginning, again, this is the beginning, all right? So subscribers in 2023, uh, you see in 2022, they had or they had a goal to get to 10 million. They surpassed their goal, expedited that just based on the traction from how people are excited about this opportunity. They're in a hundred countries, a thousand cities. They promote this worldwide um, blockchain adoption. And it's a win-win for everyone. And that's why people are so enthused about it. They hit 10 million users back in December of 2023. They weren't expecting to do that until next year. I'm sorry, they already hit it, okay. All right, so here's some of the launches that they've had. Um, I am just dismayed. I love Dubai. I think that's happening this week or this weekend. And the upcoming ones will be in June uh, 2023 in Tokyo. And then we have July 2023 in Singapore. So FinTalk and just get a whiff of what's happening. You see, previously they were in, say, Vietnam, India, South Korea, the, the Asian and Indian market where the majority of the users, the, the over 13 million users for the company are. So a great thing about being a part of the Foresight family is that Mr. and Mrs. Bean are always going to find a way to help you win. And one of those things that they've done is put together a, con a contest called Sponsor Mr. Bean, the Recruiting Machine. Someone has their line unmuted. Carly, can you um, mute them, please? Okay. All right. So thank you, dear. Um, sponsor Mr. Bean, the Recruiting Machine. And that deadline for that contest ends May 15th. The details are in our Facebook group, but essentially you sponsor at least 20 people, you become a GM, and what Mr. Bean's going to do is, be, is let you sponsor him, and he'll use your link to start a new position. He'll put five people in front line, and he will run that thing all the way into the ground. And I heard Dr. Garner saying last week that Mr. Bean said he did it for her for being the first GM in the organization. You know, is this going to make you not inspired um, to go and do more? And she was like, oh, absolutely not. I love the way she thinks. She's like, I have other legs. I'm going to try to get you to be in one of my other legs as well. So if you are smart, you're going to go out here and get with the person who referred you, figure out what you need to do to have someone like Mr. Bean, who is a recruiting machine, help build out your organization. Guys, we are all about fun, living a mogul lifestyle. You saw the video at the beginning. We will have another mogul lifestyle event 
this year. We had one in Puerto Rico. This is Cancun last year. We had one in Puerto Rico earlier this year, where we also did a boot camp with educational information to help people to learn. You know, you, you don't want to be in a position where you have access to now a hundred million dollars and you don't know what to do with it. You know, we see this happen a lot with people who win the lottery, who get a settlement, who get an NFL contract or some type of major league contract, and then they don't really know how to work with that money and how to use it to make sure it has longevity. And so we have weekends where the Mr. and Mrs. Bean educated us on what to do with the dollar, how to make our money last, how to diversify our funds. All right. And so you'll be able to be a part of that. But our next event is all fun. It's bring your family, live an amazing lifestyle around people who are like-minded. There's nothing like it, all right? We have already booked for 2024 that you can get in on um, our cruise to Cozumel. And so we're calling all the fun people, right, to cruise with the beans. You just put your deposit down for $150 and you are in there and the payment plans um, will be discussed with you. And then last but not least, we have an amazing program um, collaboration with Grant Cardone's University. If there's anyone here that's like, man, I love this, but I've never really been successful with talking to people. I know this can impact lives. Have no fear. The Grant Cardone University collaboration allows us to take the Foresight family and develop them using his online platform, his live sessions to grow your organization. And it not only helps, we have people in pretty much every walk of life and career in our platform, in our portfolio. They use it in their daily lives and in their work and life career work in life. Um, and then we have Mr. and Mrs. Bing, my goodness, earnings on automation coaching program. With this platform, you get access to systems that will help you have success just plugging into the systems. You don't have to go and recreate the wheel, do anything special. You can figure out like, hey, what do I need to do? Tell me step A, B, C, and D, and it's there for you. Guys, with that, I want to thank you for joining us. Thank you for letting us take this time to really dig into um, this platform and what it has to offer and what's behind blockchain technology. I hope you took a tremendous amount of notes. I hope you were able to, you know, get this information, have a clearer understanding and put yourself in a position where you are able to move forward and make the best out of this opportunity. A lifetime or the opportunity of a lifetime is only good for the lifetime of the opportunity. Take action, empower your family, do it now. I look forward to seeing you guys on the beaches of the world. Good night.